Hello and welcome to the Valley. Today I am your host, Janet Michael. We are back on the Zooms today with Melanie Mullinax. Melanie is the communications and event manager for the State Arboretum of Virginia at Landy Experimental Farm. Thank you for getting that right. Awesome. I always have to cheat and write it out first, though, Melanie. And usually this is the only time that I'll say it is at the very beginning. And from here on out, you will be from Blandy. That's fine. (laughs) I get that. I do that, too. But it's always fun to have you on the show because Blandy is one of my absolute favorite places that we have here in the Shenandoah Valley. And you guys always have something cool and fun and interesting happening. And even when you don't, just coming and walking the grounds is cool and fun and interesting. Oh, yes, most definitely. We hear that a lot, Janet. We were out by there a couple of weeks ago. Our vet is in Boyce, Roseville, and we were taking the dogs to the vet and on our way back, I looked at Tim and I said, you know, we have their collars and their leashes. We should take them over to Blandy and just walk around for a bit. But the skies all of a sudden looked dark. It was one of those crazy, weird passing storm nights. So we were so close to be able to introduce the dogs to Blandy. <laughs> oh my gosh. Have you not brought them out here before? We have not. We have not. Oh my gosh, so gosh. yeah, that was one of those things we were in the neighborhood and that rarely <laughs> It's either when the dogs are with us. That's probably why you were able to drive by. We hear people have their dogs in the car, and if they drive by Blandy, they know what it is, and they (laughs) want to go. We hear all the time it's one of dogs' most favorite places to visit. And now that you have this new information center, it's going to be humans' favorite place to visit all over again. That is very true. Yes, we're very excited to officially open our new information center. We've actually had a soft opening since about April of this year, but we officially opened it at the beginning of July with a really nice ribbon cutting ceremony with the Regional Chamber of Commerce. And it is quite outstanding from what I gather. The thing that jumped out to me, I was reading in your press release that there's a giant 3D ginkgo tree, which I think is amazing because A, they're beautiful and B, that one doesn't have an odor. (laughs) Yes. It's a replica. It's not like a real tree in there. It is. The information center is really beautiful. I mean, it's in a small space, but as soon as you open the door and go in, that's the first thing is this 3D replica of a beautiful golden ginkgo tree. It just centers everything else in the information center. Everything else is centered around it. How did the idea for converting the gift shop into an info center come about? I'm not totally sure about that. It's my understanding that the gift shop, which was called Our Shop, had been closed down since before 2020. And I think it was hard to get volunteers to be there in the gift shop all the time. Between that time when it closed down and during the pandemic, when we were trying to figure out how we could stay open and keep people coming to Blandy and this beautiful outdoor education facility, I guess the idea came about for this information center. And at the same time, we also had a very generous donor who was interested in funding the information center and making it interactive in a place that people would really want to come to and really get their bearings of all the different activities that we have at Blandy. So this information center helps people get acclimated when they get here. It lets them see some of the different collections that we have. We've got a really beautiful, huge watercolor map in there so people can see exactly where they are when they come to the information center. It helps them see where they need to go to get to the collections that they want to see or the trails that they want to walk on. And we also have information about some of the programs that we have out here too. So it really does a good job and letting people know everything that's available out here at Blandy. I would guess that a lot of us that come to a place like Blandy, we come for whatever reason it is that we come. And we may not necessarily know about all of the other things. We get in our little Blandy bubble, so to speak, and having some place like the Information Center where I can see all of the things and could maybe have been coming there for years. And then I'm looking and go, oh, I didn't even know this was here because it is a pretty large property. 
It is very large. The state arboretum section is 172 acres, but Blandy itself is over 700 acres. So it is a big property. And I think you're exactly right. People get their favorite spots and that's where they head. And that's fine to do as well. But it is also good for people who are new or maybe people who have been coming here for a long time to see what other things that you can do out here. And it's not unheard of for an organization like yours, particularly the size of Blandy, as you mentioned, to have an information center like this. It's standard. So it's a little surprising that you haven't had one before now. Yeah, no, we're really excited about it. When they designed the information center, there were features added to make it interactive too. There's a section on there where children can do rubbings of plants or insect skins. There's a little section that has a rotating exhibit that we rotate out seasonally that children can actually see and touch snake skins or conifer cones. So there's things like that there. And then there's also a section that gives information on the history of Blandy that a lot of people might not know about. And in addition to the history, it also lets you know about some of the activities and programs that are going on today. So it really encompasses everything that people would want to know when they come out to visit Blandy. And most of the time when you and I are talking, we're talking about just random families bringing their kids or like we were joking earlier, people coming out to walk their dogs. But you do school groups. You have homeschool groups. There are large groups of people that can come and tour the facility. This is a great starting point for them. Oh, yes, it really is. And you're right. I think last spring we had over 6,000 school children from all over Frederick County, Warren County, Loudoun County, who came out for educational programs here at Blandy. In addition to that, we have public programs all the time. Most of them are environmental type programs, but we have other fun programs too. Like we just had a moth party during National Moth Week and we had a Firefly Festival. Festival. I think that's a tradition. We had that back in June. So there's all kinds of family events going on really on a week to week basis. Where is the information center physically located within the property of Blandy? So it's right in the quarters building. It's exactly where the gift shop used to be, the R shop. So when you come into the main entrance and you walk down the main path underneath the arches of the beautiful quarters building, it's just the first door on the left. You can't miss it. We have some nice signage out there and a welcome mat, and you can just like open the door and walk on in. It's very easy to get to. And Blandy itself, the property is open from dawn until dusk, but I'm guessing this information center is probably going to have regular business hours, right? It does. And we try to keep that a little bit flexible because we do have staff here nine to five on Monday through Friday. So the information center is usually always unlocked between those times. On the weekend, the hours might be a little bit shorter. We do have weekend staff here, but they're not always here till five. So we make sure we just lock up the information center before the last staff member leaves. It's kind of like, I got here first. I'm going to go ahead and open it up. Oh, wait, I don't think anybody else is here. I'm the last to leave. I better go make sure it's locked yes. before I go. <laughs> yes, but we try to keep it open as long as we can to capture as many visitors as we can so they have the opportunity to visit. Let's take a break. When we come back, can we talk a little bit about the Plain Air Festival, the Plain Air at the Arboretum that you've got coming up in September? I love Plain Air, so I am excited for you to share what that's going to look like. Can we do that in the next segment? Oh, sure. Yes, I'd love to talk about that. We are on the Zoom today with Melanie Mullinax. She is Communications and Event Manager for the State Arboretum of Virginia. That, of course, is located at Blandy Experimental Farm. We're going to learn about some upcoming events when we come back in just a couple of minutes. Hey guys, I'm Holly. And I'm Bonnie. And we would love to meet you at our brewery, Winchester Brew Works. That's right. Our family-friendly tasting room in Old Town is the perfect place to hang out any day because we're open seven days a week. We've got refreshing beers, seltzers, and slushies, plus food trucks and events on the weekends. And the best part is we are so excited to be part of this brand new passport program where you just need four stamps from Winchester area breweries and cideries to get some great free swag. So pop on by our brewery and we'll get you a passport. You can find out more at winchesterbrewtrail.com.
Welcome back to the Valley today. I am your host, Janet Michael. We are on the Zoom today with Melanie Mullinax. Melanie is the communications and events manager for the State Arboretum of Virginia at Blandy Experimental Farm. We talked in the first segment about the new information center, which sounds lovely. I'm going to have to come out now and just wander around and see what it looks like, Melanie. But you've got something else coming up in September that I am absolutely putting on my calendar plain air at the Arboretum? Oh, yes. And we're very excited about that, Janet. This is our second annual plein air at the Arboretum. We call it a festival of art and nature. We'll be welcoming 100 artists from across the region and sometimes across the country who will be coming out here for three days, September 18th, 19th and 20th, and they'll be out at the Arboretum painting plein air, all the beautiful scenes of Blandy, and then we'll culminate that week with a public festival on Saturday, September 21st, that's open to the community. It's a free event. The artists will be out here showing and also selling their beautiful work, and of course, a portion of the art sales will go to benefit the State Arboretum of Virginia. I had never heard of plein air painting until I became friends with Kelly Walker. And you and I both know Kelly Walker, wonderful artist based in Front Royal. And Kelly loved doing those, but would struggle sometimes to find a place that had the scenery that she was interested in actually painting. You check a lot of those boxes at Blandy from marshlands to greenery to trees, all of the things. Yes. And even actually our quarters building is a popular spot for plein air painters to paint. And while we have this event every year and we're very excited about it, we actually have plein air artists out here year round. And Blandy has its own like local plein air group that meets on a monthly basis. So it's something that goes on out here year round. This big event that we have in September is actually a partnership between the Northern Virginia plein air artist and Blandy. So they're the ones that help put it on. And it is publicized nationally, and that's why we get artists from all around the region and some even farther out than that that come here for this particular event. And this is a particular type of painting because they're doing it, they're sitting in the atmosphere. They're literally right there looking at what it is they're painting, and it will be done in those couple of days that they're sitting there creating it. Sometimes we think of artists that work for months or even years on their particular masterpiece. This isn't what that is. They're doing it in the moment, and then here is what it is. When it's done, it's done. That is really true. And actually the sale, the art sale that happens on Saturday is actually called a wet paint art sale because a (laughs) lot of times the art is still, the painting is still wet. It's not like totally dry yet. This is my first time doing this event and I've been told already, you have to be like really careful of how you handle the paintings and things like that because the painting could actually still be wet or damp because it was just done. You're right. In addition to the art sale and the show on Saturday, there will be judges, featured judges that come in and they'll judge the art. The artists will win prizes for first, second, and third place. And I do also think that there is a prize for the fan favorite, like people who come out that I think they get to vote on their favorite painting as well. Oh, that is fantastic. Being able to interact with art and the artists has always been my favorite thing. It's one of the reasons why I love, in particular, the First Fridays that they do in downtown Winchester, because a lot of times you will have artists that are set up and it may be painting, but it may be basket weaving, but you get to talk to them and ask them about what they're thinking when they're doing it. And why did you choose this particular spot to sit in? And how long have you been painting? You really get to know know the person that's created this beautiful piece of art. You really do. Another way the public can participate this year too, if you do love art, even if you're a beginner at it, this year for the first time, we're offering some pre-event art workshops with some of these featured artists. So we have one that's happening on Monday, September 16th. It's an all-day plein air painting shop where you learn how to do plein air art from start to finish. I believe that one is $120 to participate. 
And then the second one is a two-day art class. And it's on Monday, September 16th and Tuesday, September 17th. It's a more in-depth class. I think that that instructor is advising that you at least be an advanced beginner or a seasoned artist to participate in that one. And then one other thing we're very excited about is we're having a youth painting class for fifth to seventh graders. That one's going to happen on Saturday, September 14th. It's going to be conducted by two of the Nova plein air artists who are help putting on this event. And it's sponsored by the Marion Park Lewis Foundation. So we're really excited about that. There'll be 15 young artists who are just going to learn about painting. And I believe that they are also going to offer their paintings for sale or at least for show at the public event on September 21st. So we're really excited. Those are like three new events that were added this year. That is fantastic because nothing will motivate a budding artist more than potentially selling one of their pieces of art. That's very true. It's very exciting. So the event for the public is on September 21st. What time does it start? What time does it end? Give me those details. It starts at 10 in the morning and ends at 5. I think the paintings will be available for sale starting at 12 o'clock that day. We're going to have music. We'll have some live music. We will have some food vendors. We're also going to have some family art tables. We have an artist, Tanya Gupta, who has done some line drawings of three different scenes at Blandy. And we're going to put tables right in front of those scenes and families can come to those tables and color in the line drawings or add to the line drawings just so they can get a little taste of what that's all about as well. That's like community art at its finest. Exactly. Yeah, we're very excited. That's a new addition this year too. So we have lots of new things going on to try to let the community get more involved and maybe experience a little bit of plein air themselves. I will put a plug in when we were there for garden fair for Mother's Day weekend. Tom's Coffee was one of your food trucks. Excellent. I think you should get them back again. <laughs> we tried. We actually really tried. And that weekend is a big weekend. There's lots going on in the area on September 21st, which is good. I hope people come out and visit all of the events. But yeah, I wasn't able to get Tom's. And he was disappointed. Tom's Coffee was disappointed as well because they wanted to come out, but they were already booked. But we hope we have another coffee shop coming out. I think I have one lined up. People can just show up that day. Like you said, it's free admission. They don't have to get a ticket, any of those sort of things. They can just come rolling up starting at 10 a.m. on the 21st and enjoy all of this art that these artists have worked so hard on over the last couple of days. That's right. One other event the public can participate into, we have on Thursday evening, Thursday, September 19th, there is a quick draw competition and what that is, is that artists bring their canvases and they are given two hours to go and paint a scene. So exactly at three o'clock, they go out to their spot, they paint, paint, paint. And at five o'clock, they have to come back in and they have to bring whatever that they have completed in that time frame. And then there is a judging of that and prizes awarded too. And that's not only for the artists that are out here, like anybody can come and sign up for that as well. They need to come, I think, before 2.45 on that Thursday to sign up, but the public can participate in that too. So I just wanted to put a plug in for that because that's fun too. If you ever wanted to try some plein air and you weren't able to register as an artist for the event, you could participate with the other artist in this quick draw event. That sounds like so much fun and yet terrifying at the same time. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I do think the quick draw, I believe some of that will be for sale on Saturday as well. There's going to be a lot of art. There'll be a lot of art for sale. You mentioned when we were talking in the first segment about the Information Center, about all of the different programming, that the Information Center will have that large TV that gives you an idea of different programming and things like that. You have all kinds of programming, not just events like this plain air, the Arboretum. You have classes and instructional things and hikes and tours and all sorts of things that happen at Blandy. We do. We have a program that's been going on that's been very popular. It's actually a series. It's our eco-friendly landscaping for your backyard series. 
And I think we're on our second or third one of it. Last month, it was on grass cutting, like how to maybe stop having to cut your whole lawn and you can turn some of it back into native plant area again. This month on August 22nd, part of that series, we're going to have gardening for birds, which I'm sure is going to be of an interest to lots of people. And it'll help people understand how to create a backyard oasis for birds to come and visit. So that's one of the programs. And again, that this is a whole series and it's like really interesting. Each month there's a different program and it's really to help homeowners, maybe not people with like tons of acreage, but just like homeowners learn how to have more of a natural habitat in their own backyard, which is really nice. And then something very interesting, and I'm still learning a lot about this, is, is the pawpaws. And that's a fruit that was planted back at Blandy years and years, decades ago. And we're just learning the history of it now and doing some studies on it now. But there's actually a program on the pawpaws if the community is interested in coming out on September 7th. And it goes over the natural history and the folklore and value of this Appalachian fruit. So that might be of real interest to people around here. And I would just encourage everyone just to go to our website and look under our things to do. There's an upcoming programs page. People can go through the whole list and see some of the upcoming programs we have and find out how to register if registration is needed. And a lot of those programs, if I am a member at Blandy, I get a discount. Sometimes I get to come to something that isn't open to the public. It's only open to membership or I get early admission, things like that. Membership is a really cool thing to have because then I also get the emails reminding me that you're doing these programs and I don't miss any of them. That's really true. It's one of the major benefits of members. I think a lot of people like to be members of Blandy because they just like to support the mission. But in doing that, you're right. All the programs or most of the programs are discounted to members. And like Garden Fair, we have the members only preview night, which is a huge benefit. The members get to shop all the Garden Fair vendors before it's open to the public. Just things like that that are really important. So yes, the membership information is on our website under the support tab. So I encourage everybody to take a look at that as well. So give me the web address before we wrap up. The web address for Blandy is blandy.virginia.edu. And I always like to remind everyone, Virginia is spelled out. (laughs) It is spelled out. Yes. Thank you. That's a good reminder, Janet. And then you guys have social media. You're on Facebook. You're on Instagram. You do a phenomenal job. You have such good content. You're, you, you have a wealth of things that you can take photos of and post about. So you guys really take advantage of all of that on your social media. We do. And we have a really good interactive audience as well who give us lots of encouragement and we're happy for that. So come out, check out the Information Center on the 21st of September. Come take part and buy yourself some local art at the Plain Air and the Arboretum and then check out a membership. I think we've checked all of our boxes today, Melanie. (laughs) I think we have. Thank you so much, Janet. Thank you for making some time today. I appreciate it. I will be back tomorrow with a brand new episode of The Valley Today a few minutes after noon, so meet me here then.